Indoor air quality is extremely important for a number of health reasons. When talking about indoor air quality, VOCs or volatile organic compounds is usually what is referenced. But something that mustn't get overlooked is the amount of CO2 in the air. For monitoring CO2 concentrations in the air, SwitchBot has recently released their Meta Pro CO2 edition. Besides measuring the CO2 concentration, it also measures the temperature, the humidity, and it even shows today's weather when connected to their hub. All of this adds up to an interesting smart home sensor that might help me improve the air quality in my apartment. So how useful is the Meter Pro and has it actually helped me improve the air quality? Let's find out together. But first off, thanks to SwitchBot for sending me their Meta Pro with CO2 monitoring. First, a little bit about myself. I suffer from pretty bad migraines. They come in waves and can be triggered by a number of things. One definite trigger is getting no sleep or getting sleep of inadequate quality. I've tried a bunch of things to improve my sleep. But when SwitchBot contacted me about letting me test their Meta Pro with CO2 monitoring, I thought it would be a good opportunity to see whether CO2 was an overlooked area of improvement for my sleep. First off, let's look at the hardware. The Meta Pro has a big LCD display that is easily viewable from different angles. You can hang it on the wall or set it on a tabletop using the built-in adjustable stand. The first thing I noticed when I unboxed the device is how well it's built. It's sturdy and there are no visible gaps where it's assembled. And also the hinge is extremely well built and doesn't feel cheap at all. One thing I really like about the Meta Pro is the fact that you can choose to power it via USB Type-C or with two AA batteries. This means that you can place it anywhere you want, even if you have no power outlet near it. This is great because, well, I have no power outlet near where I wanted to place mine. So I have been powering this via two AA batteries ever since I got it. There is one downside to using batteries instead of constant power though. And that is the frequency at which it updates the values of the temperature, humidity and CO2 concentration in the air. If you do power it with batteries, the update frequency of the temperature and humidity sensor will be limited to between 5 and 30 minutes, while the CO2 concentration will only be measured every 30 minutes. This isn't a limitation if you power it with USB Type-C, and you can also always update the values if you press the button on the top, no matter if you are powering it with USB Type-C or with batteries. The main data displayed, meaning the value that takes up most space on the screen, will be the CO2 concentration. On the top of the LCD screen, you'll see the current time and current date, as well as a weather forecast on the left side of the display, if you have it connected to a SwitchBot hub. On the bottom of the screen, you can see the built-in sensor values for the temperature and humidity. And SwitchBot has done something really interesting here. Not only can you have the built-in sensor shown on the display, but you can also choose to have other SwitchBot temperature and humidity sensors shown on the LCD as well. So if you, for example, have an outdoor SwitchBot temperature and humidity sensor that you wanted to have displayed, you can choose to do that instead of the built-in temperature. These features obviously need you to have the SwitchBot hub, since it's the SwitchBot hub that pulls data from a web service somewhere. But I think it's a really neat feature and something that sets this device apart from the competition. I really think that this is something that SwitchBots should focus more on in their marketing. If you're worried about the temperature, the humidity, or the CO2 concentration in the air rising above or below a certain threshold, the Meter Pro has a built-in alarm that you can set up to notify you about a value that you specify in the app. To test this feature, I set up the Meta Pro in a semi-enclosed container. I then mixed some sodium bicarbonate and some acetic acid. 
also known as baking soda and vinegar. This creates a chemical reaction that produces the salt sodium acetate, some water, and most importantly, some carbon dioxide or CO2. I then directed the CO2 into the container and this should result in a rise in the CO2 concentration and it should trigger the alarm of the Meter Pro. And luckily this is what we get, meaning that the Meter Pro is functioning correctly. When deciding where to place the Meter Pro, I had to consider a few things. If I placed it too close to an area with draft, then the CO2 and humidity levels would be lower than that of the rest of the room. However, if I placed it too close to my nightstand, then the CO2 and the humidity levels would be too high in compared to the rest of the room. And since CO2 as a gas is heavier than the other gases in the room, it will sink to the floor. So I also had to take the height at which I placed the Meter Pro into consideration as well. I ended up placing it on a table at the other end of the room so that I could hopefully get the most accurate level that wouldn't be skewed by my breath or by the draft of the room. Okay, so the hardware is solid, but where does the CO2 and humidity in a room even come from? Well, if you paid attention in biology class, you would know that us humans use respiration to, well, to live. So simplified a bit, we breathe in oxygen and together with simple carbon hydrates such as glucose, we turn that oxygen and glucose into energy that we can use, with the waste products being carbon dioxide and water. That CO2 and H2 is then exhaled again, making the concentration of both in a room go up. Okay, so now that we know where the CO2 and humidity in a room comes from, why should we care? Well, a high level of CO2 can contribute to symptoms such as fatigue, dizziness, difficulty in concentrating, headaches, and making you sleep lighter. To get an idea of what levels I was dealing with, I first set up the Meter Pro in my bedroom and let it measure for a few nights. A CO2 concentration of around 400 to 1000 ppm, or parts per million, is considered good, while levels of 1000 to 2000 ppm are associated with drowsiness and beginning headaches. Above 2000 and we start to experience small adverse health effects. After a week of measuring, I used the app's built-in function to export the data as a CSV file. And then I made a graph out of what I had measured. And well, take a look for yourself. Whenever I go to sleep, the CO2 level rises to and often above the dreaded 2000 ppm limit. Unsurprisingly, this is during the night where there is little to no airflow to vent out the carbon dioxide. The humidity also rises in the same time period, again due to no airflow. I was pretty surprised by these measurings, like I knew that the CO2 levels would rise during the night, but I had no idea that the problem was as severe as it is. Okay, so we know that the problem is severe. What can I do about it? Well, I could use the built-in alarm function to wake me up every time the CO2 levels rises above a certain threshold. But I imagine that I would get pretty tired of that pretty quickly. Another option I thought of doing was to use something akin to a fan to create some circulation in the air and vent out some of the CO2 and distribute it. If you're using SwitchBot's own smart plugs, creating routines that is triggered by CO2 levels within the app is possible to do. However, if you expose the Meter Pro via matter, only the temperature and the humidity sensors are exposed to other smart home systems. Just something to keep in mind. A fan would probably wake me up in the night when it turned on. So instead of using a fan, I used the IKEA Fornufti air purifier connected to a smart plug instead. I let the air purifier run a couple of nights to see whether or not it would make any difference. I then exported the data again and had a look at it. And well, see for yourself. Yeah, that didn't really make that much of an impact. I suspect that the air purifier isn't able to move enough air around to really circulate the CO2 in the air. 
So then what? What then could I do? When looking at the graph, it's pretty easy to see when I wake up. The CO2 level drops since no one is exhaling CO2 anymore in the room. But what about this part of the graph? The CO2 levels plummet very dramatically in a very short time period. Well, this is when I open the window to let in some fresh air. So obviously opening a window will vent out some of the CO2 in the room. But it's not really something that I'm willing to get up in the middle of the night to do. And due to the cold climate that we have here in Denmark, I don't really want to sleep with my windows open. Something that I hate doing even when it's hot during the summer. But what I did think of doing was to open the window just before I went to bed to try and vent out some of the CO2 that has accumulated during the day. And this is the data that I got from it. As you can see, again, it didn't really make that much of a difference. The CO2 levels dropped right before I went to bed, but they quickly rose again above the 2000 ppm limit. So what's my conclusion? Has the SwitchBot Meter Pro helped me in any way? So SwitchBot has created a device that is very well built and is very useful due to all of the data that it displays on the LCD display. I really like that SwitchBot has included the feature to not only display the internal temperature and humidity, but also use external sensors. I also really, really like that SwitchBot has included a small clock at the top of the screen. It's a small feature, but it's a very welcome feature for me at least. It's also a great feature that you are able to display the internal temperature and humidity data, but that you're also able to connect an external temperature and humidity sensor and display that value as well. I don't really like that the CO2 levels aren't exposed via matter though. It's a shame and it's also kind of weird since that air quality sensors that expose CO2 concentrations have been a part of the MATA specifications since MATA 1.2 that was released all the way back in October of 2023. But for me, most importantly, has the Meter Pro helped me get better sleep? Well, it's hard to say really. Everything I did to try and combat the CO2 levels in my bedroom, I could easily have done without the Meter Pro. However, it has made me more aware of my indoor air quality. Every time I spot the Meter Pro standing on the desk, I'm reminded to open my window to vent out some of the CO2. And sometimes the Meter Pro has reported values that were way above what I thought they would have been, again prompting me to vent out the room in times that I otherwise wouldn't have done it. So while the Meter Pro isn't directly responsible for a better indoor climate, it is indirectly responsible. And I really do love it for it. At $70, it really isn't the cheapest sensor to get. If you are fine with not being able to monitor your CO2 levels, then the regular Meter Pro is currently selling for $30. This has all the same functions, but without the CO2 sensor. Not too long ago, I made this e-ink picture frame driven by an ESP32 to fetch local weather data and display it. I have wanted something similar in my bathroom for when I'm getting ready in the morning, but my own e-ink displays are way too big and they're not able to display the time due to the nature of slow updating e-ink displays. So instead of making a display like this myself, I am actually now thinking of getting a Meter Pro and then have it display the outdoor weather instead. Whether or not you're interested in monitoring your indoor air quality, it's always a good idea to vent and probably more than you think. Whether or not venting more will help me get better sleep and cut down on the number of migraines that I'll get is something that I'll have to test over a longer period of time. But I will continue to keep an eye on the levels reported by the Meter Pro. And I have also definitely been made more aware of the indoor air quality in my apartment. I think the next step will be to look into some VOC sensors. Unfortunately, SwitchBot doesn't make any of those, so if you have any suggestions, please let me know. If you have any other suggestions for me to either sleep better, cut down on my migraines, or for any VOC sensors that I should look into, please let me know in the comments. Or as always, if you have any questions that I didn't answer, please feel free to ask away in the comments as well. Otherwise, thank you for watching. See you in the next video.